Welcome back to The Decent Garage. My name's Tim. As you saw in the last video on Long Bed Larry, we finally got the cab onto the frame. Our next big hurdle that we've got across is getting the engine started up. As we try to get the engine fired up, I'm gonna take this opportunity to give you guys a little bit of Diesel 101. In order to get a diesel engine started up, we need three things. We need a source of fuel, we need an ignition source, and we need air. Now that's very simply put, but what it looks like is getting fuel from the fuel tank up to the injection pump, then have our ignition source hit the starter and turn the motor over, and that should fire it up on this old diesel engine. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is getting the fuel from the fuel tank all the way up to the injection pump. So we're gonna be using a 3 8 inch push lock fuel line, nice braided stuff. So we've got all these push lock fittings. We are gonna to have to use a little piece of hose to go from the adapters that are already on there to the AN fittings. So uh, let's cut these up, get them all made up and put them on. All right, so we've got our fittings hooked onto our fuel sending unit. That was fairly easy. So now what we need to do is run our fuel line up to our feed and our return up by the injection pump. So we've got the line brought up through here. We gotta get our fuel filter housing on and our lift pump on so we know where to connect this to though. All right, so we have our fuel system installed. We started back at the tank, got everything hooked up to the sending unit, ran the lines through the frame rail up, and here they are right here. Now that we have our fuel coming all the way up to our injection pump, we gotta put our throttle linkage on here, our fuel shutoff solenoid, and anything else that we have that's fuel related, we've gotta put on the injection pump. So let's get that taken care of, and then we'll hop to the wiring. All right, we have the fuel system completely installed. We ran our fuel lines from the fuel tank all the way up the frame rail. Here they come to the lift pump. Goes the lift pump to the fuel filter housing, from the fuel filter housing to our dual feed, to the injection pump. We have our return line that comes over here, comes back here, back down the frame rail and to the tank. So we've got all that in, we got our throttle linkage in. I do need to get some return springs for it. We have our fuel shutoff solenoid in. I am gonna show you guys how to wire in this P-pump fuel shutoff solenoid into a VE pump engine harness. So we'll get to that once we get to all the wiring. This is going really, really smooth. Now that we've got our fuel system all hooked up, 
we need to figure out our electrical and more specifically our ignition source. Now you guys saw a couple videos ago, I pulled out some of the wiring harnesses that came with the parts of this truck and I just don't think I'm really gonna wanna use those. They're from multiple year trucks, they're from P-pump trucks, VE pump trucks, gasser trucks. I don't know which one's which. So instead of going through the headache of trying to sift through all those different wiring harnesses, we're gonna go out to one of my parts trucks. It's an 89 and it was a Cummins truck and it has the full engine bay, interior, and chassis harness on it still. So we'll go pull those out, clean them up, bring them back here, and get that all installed on the truck. So then we can start the truck with the key. So this is my 1989 single cab parts truck. It is a former Cummins truck, but it does not have the motor in it. The nice thing is it's got all the wiring harness, everything we're gonna need to use on Long Bed Larry. So I'm gonna get the engine bay harness and the chassis harness pulled. Then we're gonna start pulling apart the interior so we can get access to the dash harness and pull that out as well. So now that we have the interior really taken apart, except for the dash, I wanna show you guys how to take a dash out without having to take the windshield out. It can be done. So this bottom part of the windshield gasket covers seven screws that hold the dash up into the front firewall. So in order to do this without taking the windshield out, you have to get a box cutter and notch that gasket slightly. You just notch a little V in it, and then you can access the screw, unscrew it, so after that, your gasket's notched, yes, but it doesn't affect the performance of the gasket at all. And it's the best way to do this without taking out the windshield because these windshields are a pain in the butt to take out and especially put back in. So you have to go along and do that for all seven screws. Now I've ran into an issue. Every time I've done this before, there've been Phillips head screws under there. This time they're not, they're hex head and I don't have what I need to get these out. So I'm gonna end up just pulling the windshield so we can pull the dash and get the wiring harness out. So I'm looking for the, there it is, the end of the lock strip. So we can pull the lock strip out of the gasket and then pull the, uh, well, we'll probably have to cut the gasket out. Okay, so I'm not worried about saving this gasket, but this windshield's in really good shape. I may actually use this on Long Bed Larry, so we are gonna try and preserve the windshield. Well, that popped out much easier than I thought it would. I hope we didn't chip it on anything. Oh, yep, we cracked it. Dang it. So typically when I've done that, there's been some sort of glue on it and you have to push it with quite a bit of pressure. Well, this one didn't have anything. Chipped it here and it sent cracks all the way up to the top. So this is junk now. But now we can pull the rest of the gasket and access the screws for the dash.
There we go, there we go. dash expertly removed good all the vents look perfect and I need those okay all right so the dash is out we've got access to the wiring harness let's get the wiring harness pulled out get the vents pulled out anything else we need I'm gonna pull everything else out I can because we don't have a windshield so this isn't protected from the weather anymore so let's get this thing gutted and head back to the garage Steering column's out, wiring harness is out. Let's get the last few things and head home. All right guys, we got everything we needed. If you look past the dash, you can see all the wiring's out. Everything is out that we could possibly take that's not gonna get damaged by weather if we leave it here, so. I'm gonna leave the dash here, the door panels. Back here I've got a bunch of different parts, dash supports, behind the seat little carrier thing, fan shroud bumper, cowls, tons of stuff. Got some hoods here too, so this is where I stash some of my parts. But there's still a few good parts left on this thing that we'll pick off at some point, but we don't need anything else for Long Bed Larry. All right, so with that, let's head back to the house, get some of this stuff cleaned up, get the wiring taken care of. This is a lot of parts. This is my second truckload of parts. So we got a ton of stuff off of this donor truck. So I'm gonna spare you guys some of the boring footage of uh, cleaning up and relooming this harness, but here's a piece of the harness that I've done. This part's all re-loomed. I'll put some uh, split loom on here as well. And I just use the fabric loom tape. But I wanna show you guys a couple things that I do that make this, I don't know, that make it clean, I guess you could say. So all you do is pull the old tape off just like this. And this is old fabric tape and that's why I use fabric tape because it holds up generally pretty good. I mean, this is over 30 years old, 35 years old, okay? Now that's a pretty short run, but if you have a longer run, I'll pull a whole section of old tape off. And then what I'll do is I'll come through, get my tape. And get a, I don't know, three, four inch piece of tape. And I'll come through about every eight to 10 inches and I will wrap a piece of tape around it and that serves two purposes one it holds the wires all together how they should be keeps them all clean and close together because if you have a big section that you unravel the wires kind of separate some of the lengths will shift as well so you have one wire that's a little longer than others so it can make a mess the other reason is as you're re-wrapping it you know you're going in a circle the whole time if you don't do this, it'll actually start to spiral the whole harness 
and make it all curve and be kind of windy so it's hard to lay out flat. So that's what I do. Uh, and it still ends up a little bit twisted, but that's how it was from the factory. If you don't do this, it'll twist quite a bit more though. So now that I've got that on there, I'll reloom this part, then I'll come here, reloom this part, and I'll just keep moving through. We're almost to the end. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna spare you guys. I've already done all the other harnesses for this truck and it's taken me a couple days. So consider yourselves lucky that I didn't put you through all that. All right, so I got that harness done. Here's what it turns out looking like. Get you guys a view of that. So I use the plastic split loom. Some people use the mesh, either works. And then I'll put a wrap of tape around every joint where a wire comes out and then around the base of that wire and the end of that wire. So got this whole thing done and this is ready to go in. So I've got all the harnesses done like this. On the engine bay harness, I did leave the fusible link section alone because we're gonna totally clean that up and redo it. But besides that, everything is good to go. The interior dash harness was actually super clean. It was just dusty. So really, I just wiped it off. There were a couple spots where the previous owner tapped into the fuse box for the gauges. I repaired those wires. We're not gonna tap in right there. We're gonna set everything up on its own standalone portion up by the fusible links. So let's get our wiring harness put back in and uh, we're getting really close to starting this thing up. We're getting so close to firing this thing up. I've got the starter here. This is the original starter. I've kind of cleaned it up, painted it. Let's get this thing mounted up and then we'll have a few more things and we can turn the key and pray that this thing fires up. So that starter was contacting the frame just a little bit. So I got my grinder out. We had to clearance the frame just a little bit, about a quarter inch, not a big deal. This is the first time building a crew cab that I've had to do that, but I've heard of other people having to do that. All right, we've got the starter mounted up. We're just about ready to fire this up. A few last things we need to do. We need to run the wires to a battery. We've got enough wiring hooked up on the dash that the ignition is all hooked up and should be good to go. We also need to finish filling the engine with oil. And another thing we can't forget, I have this zinc additive. This is essential to put in any engine that you rebuild to help it break in and so it doesn't scar and have too much friction during the break-in process. So let's get that stuff done and then uh, let's try and fire this up.
All right, so we have the truck outside. Uh, we gotta see if this thing will start. Let's first make sure the ignition works uh, because then we can turn it over, make sure it turns over without a worry of it starting up yet. After we're sure the ignition is hooked up correctly and we're getting it to turn over properly, then we can hook up the fuel and it should fire right up. Where's our positive cable right here. Okay, and our negative. Well, I'm hearing the uh, grid heaters. Let's get the ignition turned off. All right, battery's hooked up. Let's see if we can get the, get it to turn the starter over. That's how we'll know if it's working. Shoot, nothing. So after doing a little bit of research, trying to trace some of this stuff and talking with a couple of my followers, Dylan Shepard, Ricky Nelson, huge, they came in clutch. I figured out I need the transmission pigtail hooked up to this harness because it is an automatic harness and I need to ground out the neutral safety switch lead from the transmission harness. So I've got that hooked up. That harness comes out of the, you know, right over here by where the heater hoses come out of the firewall. Got it coming down here. The plug is a three prong plug and the neutral safety switch is the middle prong. The other two are reverse light switches. So let's get this grounded to the battery and this should fix our issue. Okay. There we go. Okay, turns over. Now we gotta make sure we're getting fuel. So what I'm gonna do, I don't know that this lift pump is good yet. And we've got all the lines run back to the tank. So instead of trying to draw it all the way from the tank first, what we're gonna do, I put this just clear plastic hose down into a can of diesel fuel. Make sure our filter's tight. And then right here, I've cracked our overflow valve uh, so that we can purge all the air out. And then I'll go crack the injectors as well. But we gotta make sure this lift pump draws fuel up. That's the first step. So let's, let's see if that happens. So after trying that multiple times, a lot off camera as well, I don't think this lift pump is drawing fuel. So I happen to have a new one right here. So we're gonna replace it. This is from Gino's Garage. Again, I love getting parts from Gino's Garage. Go check them out. Uh, brand new lift pump for second gen. So let's swap this out and then we'll hope that the fuel draws up and we'll hope that's our issue. New lift pump is in. Actually, I need to tighten one more fitting. There we go. Okay, now it's in. Oh yeah, so even the manual pump on this one is working. So the old pump, it wasn't working. I tried it and it wouldn't work. So I've been hitting the prime button and uh, it's coming out our overflow valve, which is exactly what we want. We're not getting it to come up to the straw, through the straw quite yet, but the overflow valve is good. Saw fuel shoot out somewhere. Oh baby. Here we go guys. Okay, injectors one through three are bled. Looks like five's got fuel. Six has fuel. Yep. Four has fuel, so we should be good to go.
Woo -hoo. We did it guys. That is awesome. It sounds, sounds like the old Kubota I had here on the channel for a while without the turbo on it. Fired up, sounded good. Obviously I don't have the fuel shutoff solenoid hooked up and uh, we got to adjust the idle and all that, but we know that it fires up without an issue now. What a huge milestone to cross. Next video, I want to drive Long Bed Larry. We're gonna get the turbo, the exhaust, the intake, the fan, the radiator, the intercooler, everything done on the engine, and we're gonna try and get the drive lines in so we can try and give this thing a little drive. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you guys in the next one.